the second ever edition, I believe, of the Lines MLB Futures Breakdown with senior writer for the Lines.com, Mo Noara, and myself, Eli Herskovich. You can follow Mo on Twitter by his Twitter handle that you see on the screen. I'm not going to bother spelling it out this time. And you can follow me on Twitter at Eli Herskovich. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications whenever the Lines releases a new sports betting Video breaking down MLB futures markets. We have a lot of college basketball content coming out this time of year. So on and so forth. The lines.com is also giving away a $25 Amazon gift card in our daily pick'em contest. For more details, head over to play.thelines.com. And as always, join the Lines Discord channel to get notifications whenever we place bets. Immediate notifications to your device, computer, whatever it may be. To get the best of the number when Mo places MLB futures bets like this one that's still available at Bet Rivers. So we did a video already that you can find in the Lions YouTube channel breaking down the saves leader leader across Major League Baseball. Mo now taking a look at the player to record the most hits, or in other words, the hits leader in MLB. And you would have to scroll down 25 names to get to Mo's name here, but just looking at the market from the top. For, moving forward, Trey Turner now Philadelphia Phillies shortstop plus 700, the favorite in this market, Freddie Freeman, second year LA Dodger, first baseman, former Atlanta Braves, first baseman at 10 to 1, second shortest odds, Bo Bichette of the Blue Jays, Tim Anderson, shortstop for the White Sox. But Mo, when we scroll down a little bit further on this list or way further down on the odds board, you have an Atlanta Braves circled in the infield. So give us your breakdown here. Yeah, I went with a player who has frustrated me a lot as a Braves fan, even in the Braves uh, World Series run a couple years ago. Not my favorite Brave to watch for sure. His uh, lack of plate discipline always annoys me. Ozzie Albies, frustrating season obviously for him last year to spent basically the entire season injured. But it's that same kind of lack of plate discipline that does kind of give me a thought that he might have a shot as a pretty big long shot, like you said, in this market. Um, we do, when we look for, you know, hit leaders, we we want a player who's a free swinger. We want randomness. We want variance. And it's a market that has a lot of variance for sure. And uh, because walks, while they help the baseball team, they do not help you accumulate hits. Ozzy is going to swing the bat. He's not up there to take walks. Um, although his walk rate isn't that far from average, but he he's just, his chase rate is really high, which just results in like making a lot of contact. Basically, it's not always the best contact, but if that contact hits the ball where they ain't, then he's going to rack up some base hits. And, and that's what he's done in, in a couple of his brave seasons uh, where he was healthy over, uh, you know, 160 hits three times. And those sorts of numbers are close to where the projections believe the leader is going to be, which is Trey Turner. Um, so it's not too far off. He does have one season with 189 hits. So he can definitely do this. There was a little bit of a bugaboo, though. A little bit upsetting when I saw the early batting orders. I'm hoping Albies can hit his way back to the top because he spent most of his career hitting second for the Braves. Um, but the team has him in the six hole right now in the spring games. So that's making me a little leery, but you know, this is a long shot. And if he starts out the season hot, I think he's going to move up in the order. They have Murphy ahead of him and, and just some guys who don't profile as much as top of the order hitters necessarily. So I still think Albies has a chance to get up there. Yeah. Big acquisition in the off season, getting Sean Murphy from the A's at catcher. So you mentioned the term variance, and I think it's interesting, especially for maybe the novice batter or even someone that's been doing sports betting for a little while, because, you know, Mo, I pay attention to college basketball a lot. And when you're looking for a long shot, maybe in March Madness or a conference tournament, you're looking at potentially a high variance team. So in that regard, maybe a team that shoots a lot of threes that can get hot that might not have shot so well down the stretch. But again, those poor percentages are leading to better odds, so higher odds and therefore a more valuable bet per se. So I, again, you mentioned variance in regards to this market, but dig that into that term a little bit further of how you apply it to Major League Baseball betting futures or game by game. Yeah, just 
thinking about like different ranges of outcomes, you know, Ozzy Albies, the projections don't like him very much. Like they have him at 140 hits, which is, you know, quite a bit short, but just understanding that if things break right for Albies, we've seen what can happen. You know, he can get the bat on the ball a lot. He was a borderline star player in multiple seasons. And, and another key here is he's young. And that means the variance bar should, in theory, be a little more slanted to the good outcomes for him because he's not a player who should be declining. So variance is just thinking about variance is all about thinking about ranges of outcomes, you know, um, there's a distribution uh, of where his amount of hits can land and where, you know, for example, like you said, a final score in a college basketball game can land. And we want to try to hit on if one of the tails is gettable and, and has long odds, which this one is, I, I think the right tail for a, a lot of hits for Albies, you know, hitting on a good team, hitting in a park that boosts singles. So if he can stay healthy, which he mostly has been before last year, um, I, I think this is within reach. And, and at 50 to 1, and I even boosted it at Bet Rivers. So um, you, you can get some some big numbers here. You know, make it a smaller play because this is high variance and not going to see this money even if things go well until many months. Yeah, that you also want to consider that too. And to most point, not necessarily put down a, a big wager on a bigger price like this. And if you look at the market a little bit more in depth here, Jose Abreu also 50 to one, Michael Harris, a, another brave and Aaron judge, Brian Reynolds, Kyle Tucker, the Astros all at 50 to one as well. And like Mo mentioned, you can get bet rivers odds boosts. You can sign up for the lines.com bet rivers, sugar house promo, head over to the lines.com to get the best of the number, find the best of the number on any of Mo's futures bets and follow the lines on Twitter at the lines us for Mo Noara and for myself, Eli Herskovich. Thanks for watching and listening. More MLB futures breakdowns to come in the future. So long everybody.